Hello all. Today, we are going to be looking at a case of Michael Bryson of Eugene, Oregon. He is 27 years of age, was last seen at Hobo Campground near Dorena, Oregon in the early morning hours of Wednesday, August 5th, 2020, while partying with friends. He was was said to have wandering away, wandered away from the rave party at the campground at around 4.30 a.m. and has not been seen since. Some of his clothes turned up some months later in an area visible from the road and searched many times, but Michael remains missing. Friends and family remain baffled, expecting Michael was the victim of foul play was it it misadventure, abduction, or something else out there in the Oregon wilderness? Here is a clip from August 6, 2021. One, One year, year later, later, the search, search for 27 27-year-old Michael Bryson continues, and we thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Matt Templeman. Renee McCullough is on assignment tonight. Michael Bryson is the man who vanished in the woods of the Umpqua National Forest and shook the entire community. KZI 9 News reporter Jay Wan Jung shares the emotional story of Michael's parents as they carry on with hope. And as the days grew and the weeks grew, we knew he was gone. For Tina and Parrish Bryson, not one day goes by when they're not thinking about their missing son, Michael. I made a promise um, to Michael and his mom and his sister that I would bring him home. Michael's even made an impact on friends and coworkers. Michael was well loved by everybody. Yeah, he still is. He's, he's still a big part of a lot of our lives. On Facebook, over 20,000 people joined a group dedicated to finding Michael. But his parents say it's also become a platform to talk about mental health, something Michael struggled with. Looking back now, um, we believe that he was um, bipolar. I've been able to reach someone before they committed suicide because of Michael's story. This symbol is Michael's last tattoo, and his parents say it also represents his battle with mental health. Now it's about to become the symbol for the Michael Bryson Foundation. And that's not the only mark Michael leaves. Five days after he went missing, his parents got a special delivery to their door. And it was a t-shirt, a Nike t-shirt, and it said, there is no finish line. And I looked up to Michael and I said, this is your last words. This is, this is, why else would that t-shirt be in the mail? It's a message from above. It's a message from above. Exactly. For Tina and Parrish, Michael is not just a missing person. Michael is a victim. You know, we, we believe very strongly there was foul play. I reached out to Lane County Sheriff's Office to get a current update on the case. Surgeon Tom Speldrich tells me they have three binders completely filled with leads on the case. We wish that, you know, we would have had results, well, a long time ago on this, but we haven't, but we have not given up. And neither have Michael's parents. We aren't going away. They tell me Michael's spirit is always with them. He's with us. We can feel him. Reporting in Harrisburg, Jay Wan Jung, KEZI 9 News. Video conferencing platforms are blank. Here is the the area where he was camping. The ocean, this is in Oregon, not far from Portland. This is the campground here. Michael was six foot tall and he weighed approximately 180 pounds with short brown hair and hazel eyes. He was last seen wearing a white t-shirt 
tan shorts, white color Crocs with rainbows on them, and might have also been wearing a brown corduroy baseball cap. He had several tattoos on both legs, ribs, and arms. He stopped by his parents' house in Harrisburg, Oregon on August 4th and told his parents, Parrish and Tina, that he was riding up with a friend to a week-long birthday party slash camping trip at the Hobo Campground. According to Detective Richard Smith with the Lane County Sheriff's Office, Michael wandered away in an unknown direction and he had left his camp gear behind. His phone was powered off, and he hasn't accessed his bank account since. Hobo Camp is a small roadside campground located in the, the National Forest. It is described as a primitive, which is okay for a night or two, but not somewhere you would want to camp long, longer term. There is a path leading to a large creek. The the last picture of Michael that were taken was at the rave party in the woods with 40 to 60 people, music, drinking, drugs, witnesses say Michael was last seen in a bus on the campsite before he walked away. His mother said he got upset and walked off the bus and nobody has seen him. Michael's parents weren't alerted to their son's disappearance until 5 p.m. August 6th. They immediately drove to the area where Lane County Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue had already deployed search teams to search by land and, and by water. Tina said, by the time we found out, it was almost 12 hours since he had been missing. The moment I put my foot out of the car, I knew Michael was gone. People weren't looking for Michael. They were sitting around, drinking, eating, laughing. Nobody was out searching for him. So I felt in my gut something had happened. Parrish said, there's been a lot of conflicting stories from the beginning. This one story is that he walked away from the camp. The other story is that a group of individuals picked him up on the road. Hundreds of volunteers showed up to search miles of wilderness in an area the, SAR the SARS team on foot, on horseback, climbed the area and drones were deployed to scan from the air. For 19 days straight, the steep terrain with overgrowth and dense with trees was searched, but there was no trace of Michael. The Lane County's office had coordinated over 15 separate searches spanning two counties and paid and volunteer searchers logged over 700 hours in the investigation. Detective said, Detective Smith said, the case was an ongoing active investigation. Par Parrish Bryson said they never got a straight answer from the party goers about Michael and added that they, that he believes they knew more than what they were letting on. The stories given by some of the people at the party are inconsistent and most of those People left the day Michael went missing and continued to hold raves and parties. He added that while many people left the campgrounds, there were a few friends and several strangers who dedicated their time and energy to the search. We, we stayed at the campground for 19 days looking for our son and were truly grateful for those who stayed and helped. Parrish said his son had just been getting his life back together after a drug problem before COVID-19. Michael had been working at a local bar and grill, and he had told his parents he was interested in studying to become an electrician. But for years, his passion was music, and he was often invited to DJ sets at parties and raves across the state. Some six weeks after his disappearance, Michael and parents said, Michael's parents said, they wanted to believe their son was still alive, but they feared the worst, Parrish said, and he would never leave, just leave. Even in the toughest times, he would always contact us. The idea that he would just disappear is unheard of.
Here is the picture of Michael. If anybody has any info on Michael, please call 541-682-4150. Please share, subscribe, and like to this video. If you have any comments about this case, as I will be digging further into it, please leave them below and I will answer them at my earliest convenience. In the meantime, let's say a prayer and keep Michael and his family in our thoughts and prayers until he is found or we have some answers. Thank you.